Good morning, friends. Welcome into my home and into my kitchen here at All Things Kitchen. My name is Jennifer. Welcome if you are new here. And if you are not new here, welcome back. I appreciate you coming back. Today is a very dreary, rainy, windy day. We have a tropical storm passing us, uh, getting ready to turn into a hurricane. By the time you see this, it's going to be long, long gone, probably in a month or so, but no matter to you. But since it is just such a dreary day, I thought I would come in the kitchen and make some things and bring you along with me. So today I'm going to be trying some, a soft pretzel recipe. And it's something that I've been thinking about for a while, wanting to make some pretzels and some homemade mustard. Well, I made homemade mustard a couple of weeks ago and I did not film that because I, I wasn't sure. There are so many recipes out there that I just wanted to try it first. And I really like the flavor. It's a little harsh in the way of it almost has, has a, a horseradish kind of heat to it. Um, and it is mellowing as it goes, you know, as time goes on, which the recipes did say that. But I think it's at a perfect spot right now to have some pretzels with. I love mustard and pretzels together. And so I thought I'd bring you along with me so I can use my homemade mustard on top of my homemade pretzels. So I am trying this recipe. This recipe was not developed for a bread machine, but I am going to try it in my bread machine. If it doesn't work, we'll figure that out together. And next time I'll pull out my KitchenAid stand mixer. Um, if you don't have a bread machine, I will link this recipe down below. I'm only tweaking one little thing in the recipe. Um, due to some other recipes that I've seen, but I will put my inspiration recipe down below and we'll make some pretzels together. So I'm gonna bring you down and get all my ingredients in the bread machine and get that started for me. So I have here one and a half cups of warm water, warm being at about 110 degrees. Now, honestly, that water was a little bit hotter than 110 degrees, but this pan is metal and is usually cooler and can cool the water down. So I'm going to let this sit here for just a second while, um, before I get everything in there. I can go ahead and get my sugar and salt in there, which I'm going to do. So I am putting in one teaspoon of salt. The, the main reason that I don't want my water to be too hot is it can kill the yeast and I don't want that. But by the time I get the yeast in there and this gets started, that water temperature has definitely going to calm down. So this is where I'm altering the recipe a little bit. It calls for one tablespoon of granulated sugar. I am going to use brown sugar. Uh, when doing research for this recipe, I saw a lot of recipes use brown sugar instead of white sugar. And that is just something that I definitely wanted to try. So I put in, that was one tablespoon of my brown sugar. If you're going to do it, I would recommend uh, dark brown sugar. So also in here, I'm going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. Let me kind of stir this up a little bit to get the milk solids incorporated back so they don't just stick on the bottom of my dish here. So that is my water, sugar, butter, and salt. So 
So I have switched out my bread machine container to a bowl, which I have on my scale because I am going to weigh out my flour. We are in a humid area in the state of Florida and my flour does seem to hold a lot of moisture. So if in any recipes I can measure it, I'm going to do that. So I, this calls for four cups of flour, which is 480 grams. So I am going to measure this out and then I will add that to the bread machine. Now this is another place where I am deviating from the recipe a little bit. The recipe calls for all-purpose flour and I am using bread flour. If you only have all-purpose flour, please feel free to copy the recipe exactly. I am deviating from that just a little bit here. So I am going to go ahead. So this is 480 grams of flour. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in here. Let me get something so this doesn't go just everywhere. This is a fairly large batch and I am probably going to make half of it into pretzel shapes and the other half into pretzel bites. So I have that and so now I'm just going to make a little spot for my yeast. So this calls for one package of yeast. One package of yeast is two and a quarter teaspoons. So I have my yeast in bulk. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out two and a quarter teaspoons. Now this recipe, like I said, that I'm using, this is uh, John Canal from Preppy Kitchen. And like I said, he did not do this in a bread machine. He did this in a stand mixer. Um, and, uh, and I did alter this a little bit, but I will put that inspiration recipe down below. So I'm going to go ahead and get the bread machine pan back into the bread machine. Nice and simple. And I have this plugged in and I'm going to put this on my dough cycle. So the dough cycle is number eight on my bread machine, and I'm just going to hit start. And we can see that it's going to start mixing this all up. I will let the bread machine do all the work for me as far as the dough is concerned, as far as mixing it all up, kneading it, letting it rise, and then I will pull it out and put it into shapes. Now, like I said, this recipe was not developed for a bread machine, so I'm crossing my fingers that this will work. Um, I did look at a couple of bread machine recipes, but I really, they, they were fairly similar. But so I wanted to experiment with this one, just make a few little tweaks to my preferences and we'll go from there. So the bread machine is going to get a little noisy right here. I also have my dehydrator going. I've got some rosemary from the garden in there. And we are currently under a tornado watch um, as well as the tropical storm warning. So or tropical. Yeah, whatever. All that stuff. So. Uh, hopefully I don't lose power, which I shouldn't. Um, we very rarely lose power here, but I'm gonna go sit down and watch the weather while this does the work and I'll bring you back when it's all done. Well, we had a video malfunction, so I have two very <laughs> um, special looking pretzels that I've made here. What I did uh, is I took the dough out 
and I measured it into eight equal pieces. So I do have those sitting over off to the left here. I was going to do just a couple at a time so I don't um, get overwhelmed with the process. I have some boiling water. It's getting ready to boil. And this is about five cups of water. And I'm going to bring that to a boil and add one third cup of baking soda. And that is what makes this a pretzel is putting it in the baking soda and water for about 30 seconds. I have a cooling rack over off to the side and I'm going to dip them in the boiling, boiling water with the baking soda, which I will add as soon as this comes to a boil. And then uh, we will put each pretzel in for approximately 30 seconds. I have a spider um, and kind of a slotted spatula. I don't know which one's going to be easier to get it out. So I have a couple of tools ready. And then, so I'll get these done and then I'll work on the others. I'm bringing my temperature up to, excuse me, my oven up to temperature, which is 450 degrees. And I'm probably going to bake these in batches as well, just because I am making some pretzels and then some pretzel bites. So my water's at a boil. That is the reaction. I was expecting. So don't be alarmed when you go to do that. And I'm just going to give that a little zhuzh and then get my pretzels. I'm going to do one at a time for approximately 30 seconds. So there's one, I have that over on the cooling rack. You can kind of see that a little bit. I'm gonna turn my water down just a hair and get this second one in there. Oh, that one fell apart. So my second one fell apart, not a problem. It's all going to taste the same, but I'm going to go ahead and let those, I'm gonna let those sit for a minute while the oven is preheating and I'm gonna get started on the next one. And basically you should be able to roll these out. I had a little bit of difficulty rolling those first two and I ended up just kind of doing something like this because the dough just responded a little bit better to that. Now it didn't come out very even, but we'll see what we can do. See if we can get better as we go. A little bit of flour on my hands. I'm just kind of doing this in sections because it's getting thicker sections and thinner sections. And maybe I... And that, that process for me just seemed to work a little bit better to kind of bounce it a little bit. And then see if I can roll it to kind of 
even it out. Have it not be so raggy looking. Let's see what we can do. And then I'm just taking my bench scraper and measuring it to make sure that I'm at at least 22 inches. I'm putting it in like a horseshoe shape. I'm going to cross it and then cross it again and then fold that over and kind of dimple that in. And then I'm going to set this aside over on my flowered parchment paper. And grab the next one. So maybe if I just do these two at a time and then when I get four of them done, I can go ahead and stick them in the oven. The oven should be preheated by the time I get four done. So if you get some thin spots like I just had, just kind of put it back together. It's dough, so it is pretty malleable. But it is wanting to, like I said, spring back on itself. I think when I try the, I might try something different on the next round. Instead of flour, I might try some oil. I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea, but we'll see. So I have a mess here, which is okay. Well, whatever. Probably won't even post this video. These look so ugly. We'll do ugly ones with. So I put an egg wash on a couple of the ugly ones and then these other ones I'm just putting some flaky sea salt on. I do not have pretzel salt and if this is something that I think tastes good then and something I want to make often maybe pretzel salt is something I will invest in. I don't think it's that expensive but I don't want to buy something if I find this not favorable for me. And how much salt you put on there is your preference, of course. And like I said, I'm just using sea salt. This is molten sea salt. I'm going to put these in the 450 degree oven for approximately 12 minutes. This round, I'm going to, ooh, brand new bottle, spray some oil down there and get that on my hands as well. It seems sometimes I have better success with oil than adding more flour, which I can tell right away that I can definitely roll these so much better with the oil. So I don't, I'm hoping it's not going to change the flavor or how they bake up, but oh my goodness, what a difference that makes because that first round was a disaster. It's fun learning new skills though. Because if I want a pretzel, 
if I can learn how to do this to where they taste good, if I can find a good recipe and a good technique, then I don't have to buy it from the store. I can make it at home. That is so much better. Let me give a preliminary measurement here. And get my U shape. I'm still a little bit fatter on this end. So we'll, we'll kind of rule that out a little bit. And twist. Uh oh. Got a little too zealous on that one. Everything was going so well. Okay. So twist, twist, flip reshape. I'm just going to kind of push that on there and I'm going to go set this over here on my flower lined parchment paper. And we'll grab another one. I think there's enough oil there. Maybe not. So much better. Look at that. So obviously you want to try to use even pressure as you roll it out. Because you want to try the, <laughs> the end result. You want it to be the same thickness, thinness throughout the entire roll of dough. And... Maybe now would be a good time to kind of do that. Lovely. There we go. Reshape. Yeah. All right. Put this one over here and let it sit. Now what I think I might do is do some pretzel bites. So I'm basically going to roll this dough out just like I did for those pretzels. And then instead of forming it into a pretzel shape, I'm going to cut them into bite-sized pieces. Needs more oil. And that's just avocado oil, so a neutral flavored oil and it is just working better for me than using flour again. All right, I'm not going to worry about the length of this one as much and just No particular size. I'm just chopping these. I'm not going to shape them any further. I am going to put them over here because I still, I will need to still put these in the baking soda water solution. There we go. All right, I'm going to get these two pretzels into the boiling water. Boiling water, which is not boiling anymore. But I'll turn that temperature back up and I have seen some people just have a bowl of hot, boiling hot water and put the baking soda in there and not necessarily have the water boiling. I don't know. I don't know which technique is better. I don't know. It might might be the same. It might not be. I don't know.
I probably could have used a bigger, flatter pan pot, and that way I could have done a couple at a time. But with this being my first time, I wanted to do them one at a time. So that did just break a little bit. It had a thin spot on it. When these come out of the oven, I have seen some recipes that call for putting melted butter on top. And some that don't call for that. So again, I may do half and half on that. I may cover some with melted butter, oh, sorry about that, and then leave some without it. So I should probably get my butter out in a dish that I can melt it as soon as I get this one out. Okay, friends. I don't think I can be mad at that. I'm going to set these over here off to the side to cool. I am going to get a spatula and put them on a cooling rack so they do not continue to cook. Now I have this next batch. Let me show you. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see this one I put egg wash on and this I put egg wash on and I put it on this one right here and they're completely different colors. So I don't know that the egg wash made that much of a difference because this looks the same as this and I did not put, put egg wash on this. So I don't know if the egg wash makes that big of a difference. Shaping them correctly makes a big difference when it comes to their looks. But as I've stated before, I am not perfect. And I just, I hope for nice tasting. You know what? The egg wash may help the salt stay on these little pieces a little bit. So since it didn't make a difference as far as making it too dark or too light, I might as well put the egg wash on there to help the salt stick. And these as well. And I still have more dough over here. Set that off to the side and get this salt on here. These little ones will make nice little just treats. And I'm going to get these in the oven. That was nine minutes that last batch did. So now that my kitchen's a disaster. I have one more dough ball left. Let me go ahead and deal with that and get that ready to go in the oven and then we'll taste the pretzels together. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have mess cleaned up a little bit. I still have some pretzels in the oven and I have the last ball of dough that I made into something that fell apart in the water and that's gonna go in the oven as soon as these come out. So I did go ahead and put some melted butter on one piece. And this piece I did not. Uh, this is a fairly decent looking pretzel. So we are going to, and I have my mustard here in a container. So I'm just, these containers 
I just bought these specifically for my mayonnaise and mustard. So it comes in a set of two. One has a bigger tip than the other. I just decided, you know, you use less mustard than you do mayonnaise. So, but I really like these. Uh, these were recommended the best bottles by America's Test Kitchen. And so I went ahead and got them. And the tip on here has a hinge. So it doesn't continually get in over the tip right there. It's very nice. It stays sealed. It doesn't get all gunky on the top. It stays nice and clean. Same with the one that I use for mustard. Anyway, so I'm going to put a little bit of mustard on my plate. So I'm going to try the one with the that I put the butter on. Let me try it just by itself first. That's nice. I try it with the mustard. Mm. Oh, that mustard is so good. I think before when I said when I took those out, I, I think I said that they took nine minutes. I'm sorry, 12 minutes. Um, this is a 12 minute bake. And these ones that I just took out, these baked for 12 minutes as well. So we've got those little bites and our, um, we'll call them pretzels. I did bake those on the cooling rack, so I don't need to obviously take them off the pan and put them on a cooling rack. Um, I don't know if I should have done that because they're, they're sticking to the cooling rack. Let me try the one pretzel. I'm going to tear off a piece that didn't have the, that I didn't put the butter on. So that crumb in there just looks delicious. It's got a nice chew to it. Let me get a piece that has a little bit more salt with that mustard. Mm. Mm-hmm. That is just what I was wanting. They are soft. They're not hard pretzels. They're, they are soft pretzels. They have that typical pretzel chew. It's got a little bit of a crunch on the top. And then that mustard just has that little bit of horseradishness to us to it. It's mellowing as each day goes by. Mm. Now all I need to do is get better at shaping the pretzels. So what worked for me a little bit better was using the oil instead of the flour. Let me see if I can get these off these cooling rack real quick. That didn't take much work. I do, did want to try one of these little bites because I think they're going to be a little bit crispier. I have to try it with the mustard. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not mad at that at all. I don't care what they look like. If you like pretzels at all, please try this. I'm happy that this worked well in my bread machine because I like using my bread machine better than I like using my KitchenAid for making doughs. But if you don't have a bread machine, that's fine. Use your, your mixer. If you don't have a mixer, you could do this by hand. It's just going to take more work. The directions are will be in the recipe. I did tweak that recipe just a little bit. 
And um, so you can follow the recipe as written. John Cannell has a lot of recipes out that are just absolutely delicious um, over at Preppy Kitchen. So check him out for some of his recipes as well. I hope you give this a try. If you do, please comment and let me know. Let me know, have you ever made pretzels before? Or do you like pretzels or you're not a pretzel fan? Or you like pretzels without the mustard? I want to hear about you guys. So leave some comments down below and let me know your thoughts on pretzels, soft pretzels, hard pretzels, and mustard. Once I get through this batch, I am going to make some more so that I can can it and have it on my shelf and ready to go. And uh, I will bring you along for that process. So friends, I appreciate you coming along with me as I did yet another new recipe, kitchen experiment, something that I've been thinking about for a while. And not everything has to be pretty. It does need to be good so that we can eat it and that our efforts don't go to waste. So I'm so happy that this is good. And on this rainy, just crappy day with uh, the storm coming through, I get to put a smile on my face with some homemade pretzels and homemade mustard. I made that. So thank you for coming along. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week. And I can't wait to see you next time. Take care.